a lot of people come to me and say, oh yeah, I see this and this there. And I try not to listen to that because once they tell me there is kind of a head coming out of somewhere, I just never stop seeing it. And they kind of jinx the, the image for me. <laughs> so um, yeah, I try to be just as uh, honest to the original image as, as I can. had the opportunity to go to America, to the States. It was different, um, well, completely different uh, um, approach to art, and uh, it was a bit more classic, but I had really wonderful teachers who taught me, especially uh, painting and drawing and printmaking. I did a lot of printmaking there as well. Um, and uh, I did a lot of woodworking as well. So, you know, they had beautiful um, studios and they had everything. Uh, you would ever need. But then on the other hand, I was, in, I was completely unaware of contemporary art. Uh, so I was doing very classical things and, you know, working with figure, figurative things. And, and I was not thinking about the conceptual work yet. Um, and I think I came to it a bit late because of that. I was not kind of directed to that interest. At one point, one of the teachers um, who had just come back from... Uh, from um, uh, from graduate school and uh, he was looking at a lot of conceptual art and, um, and uh, also reading all the French theory and uh, he was really into, into French theory and George Bataille and uh, so he introduced me to this, uh, to this uh, new, um, new way of thinking about the work that I was doing and be more transgressive and, you know, not just drawing beautifully, but what can you do with, with what you, you know, what you're representing as well. And try to get my drawing as, as acute as possible so that people would never kind of, uh, they would kind of see the image and think that if that was to happen spontaneously, they would accept it as, as so, you know, so that people never say, you know, never doubt that could have happened. And uh, that's also very important. That's when I, when I reach that point, that's when the drawing is maybe finished. So um, if somebody looks at the piece and then they like the image and they don't even know that it's, it's made with how it is made, um, it's fine with me. I mean, that's, uh, that's even better, you know, when people forget that it is, it is uh, a drawing. I started drawing in Venezuela and doing this um, uh, kind of this uh, copying a different medium. I uh, started drawing uh, water and ink. I thought, well, I know how to draw very well a face and make a portrait. Why not start drawing other things that are abstract, you know? So I started really getting into that, copying stains and copying um, abstract work and after a while you started just my way of, of of doing this it was merely just looking at what paint would do and uh, just drawing that viscosity or that um, you know the effects of uh, covering it was something about covering how how paint covers a surface and how it expresses something you know so um, it was uh, very painstakingly kind of drawing all these effects and a lot of people would just look at them as stains and not think m more of it. So it was kind of effective. And, uh, um, but uh, back then I didn't know why I was interested in that. It was just, just because I could do it and, uh, and because I was bored of drawing people really. It's not my gesture. So I'm reproducing the gesture, but uh, it, I'm also saying it's not mine. In Saint Etienne, I started taking a lot of photos with. Um, I think the beginning of it all was uh, looking at uh, the the walkway is different. Uh, the material of the walkway in France is made with um, asphalt, and is a very thin asphalt that, when it dries, is very black, and when it's wet, uh, it's it looks like a mirror. So, but when it dries, it kind of has this paper quality where. Uh, in, uh, in every corner, in every little kind of, there's a lamppost or something, you know, there's a stain of uh, urine 
would dry in a way that would make a painting. So I would come at night really late and with my flash I would photograph this, uh, these stains and uh, the contrast would make them look more like a painting and you would lose that um, kind of, you know, pea stain kind of quality of it. So you would forget that it was that. So it was a beautiful kind of, that was the beginning of, of kind of um, uh, research into stains and, uh, and, uh, and into compositions that were already there for me. So uh, be, I started drawing these things in all this work, photography work, really just amassing a lot of, a big amount of photographs. And, uh, and I started looking at what was dirty and what was not. Um, uh, not really art or n was accidental more uh, the things that we never really looked at and you know patinas of you know people manipulating a uh, surface and uh, you know I got interested in into this um, these doors where you know the handles you know, around the handles would have all this kind of uh, handwork you know all this uh, uh, a finger you know macula there and because I have I don't know, in me, I have this graphic, um, uh, I'm drawn to graphic imagery. Um, so I started taking that as a challenge, let's draw that as well. To me, they were paintings because it's a surface and it's a, you know, it's deployment of marks on a surface and that's what painting is in, in the end. The fact that I draw these things are, is also important because I'm, I'm kind of um, taking um, responsibility for whatever happens in there. So there are accidents, there are, you know, something that looks spontaneous but is also done in a controlled way, in a very um, non-spontaneous way. So I'm taking control of every, you know, every um, element of that composition as well. So that's really understanding composition and, and how a painting is made. I have uh, very many photographs. I shoot as much as I can. Most of the time is just something that I find when I'm work, walking or um, even sometimes I, I have asked friends to send me photos that they might find interesting. If they're really, really good, one day they come out of the folder and then make it to the wall. And the wall is important because that's when I really look at them for a long time. Sometimes the, the photos, you know, have the yeah, they have the uh, they have a, quali a certain quality that kind of calls for drawing, you know. And sometimes they have this graphic energy that um, that uh, that call for you know for the challenge, I guess. So, uh, and those are you know they're like falling in love with an image, you know, just. They just happen, you know, I just put it on the wall and then one day I see that's it, I need to draw that right now. It's very rare that I, I that I'm, um, I regret starting a painting and then I just stop in the middle and then uh, let it be for a long time and try to forget about it. And then when I come back to it, maybe, maybe I'm, I'm more mature or, you know, I can kind of accept it in a, in a different way. And I, I go for it again and, you know, develop it. Mm -hmm.